Good afternoon, everyone, from Cricket and Corky's Clubhouse, now featuring Jill TV. I uh, just want to do a quick video about how uh, Jill works. There's very little out there right now about fixing Jill or really anything going on inside of her. Um, so I just wanted to kind of do a video to show a little bit about that. We're not going to actually get into the repairing today, but um, we're going to look at the different parts and kind of just how she works. So what you're seeing right now are the four Jills that I have completely fully restored. Um, when I got them, uh, none of them worked. They all had different parts that kind of worked. Some barely moved their arms. Um, the heads moved, but no facial movement and uh, they either didn't play a tape at all or just there was nothing so um, we've come a long way <laughs> and these are also the four outfits that i have found so far so obviously over here we have the original jill outfit next to that is jill slumber party and my newest addition is jill's cheerleader tryout uh, outfit and then last is jill babysits so you notice uh, Jill babysits the aprons a little faded. Um, it's all I've been able to find so far. And uh, Jill, Jill's cheerleader tryouts there, that is her original dress and stockings. Um, but I have had to uh, spray paint a pair of her original shoes, white, and also uh, find some pom-poms from an American Girl doll. And I had to replace the ribbons in her hair. Um, the outfits are super hard to find. So. If you have any leads or any tips on how I can find more, um, I would love to make more videos for everyone, uh, including Jill TV, and make some more music videos for her. Um, but I am, I've been looking for over a year, and uh, this is as far as I've got. Uh, her outfits and tapes are very, very hard to find. So if you know of any, definitely uh, hit me up, let me know in the comments below, or message me. All right, let's get started in the, uh, the parts section. I did want to do one more addition real quick before we get into this. Um, just to say that fixing Jill is nothing like Cricket and Corky. Uh, you saw in a video I previously posted where I repaired a uh, African American Cricket and the body pretty much is the same as Corky. Um, Jill is nothing like either of those. Um, I can fix a Cricket and Corky now within minutes and it takes hours, uh, days, months to fix a Jill. Um, it's been a trial and error process because, like I said earlier, there's nothing out there to show you how to do anything hardly. Um, so I've had to just kind of figure it out on my own. Um, but she's way, way more complicated. There's way more belts, way more motors, lots of plastic parts that easily break, lots of wires that come undone. Um, so I would say proceed with caution. If you want to try to fix your Jill, just... Uh, be careful um, because you can easily mess up and mess things up more. Um, when I got all of these Jills, like I said, none of them worked. And some of them you can tell over the decades, what Jill's 35 now. Uh, several of them you can tell people have tried to repair over time and mess things up. So I had to undo a lot of uh, damage. So again, she's just very complicated. So proceed with caution if you're going to try to fix your Jill. Um, I would suggest trying to send her to a professional to work on um, because again very complicated and very easy to mess up more all right let's get started so um what do we want to look at first i guess let's just kind of go through parts let's look at things um so <clears throat> the head uh, is kind of its own separate entity um, it has its own motor, its own belt, it's, it's completely separate from the body, um, so we can start there. So I actually just started working on, let me grab her, Ugh, so heavy. this girl, uh, last night. So I'll set her down here, okay, I have her in a glass jar. So, uh, as you can see, she's not near as ready as these girls are. Um, so what I had to do, her hair was super nasty and uh, dirty brown and faded, so I had to wash all of her hair, and you see it knocks out all the curls. So that'll have to be curled um, later, but it came out pretty well. It's pretty frizzy on the ends, so I'm, I'm using a, uh argon oil to kind of hopefully get that frizz out of there. Um, and then her eyes were really yellow. Um, they've gotten much better now. There is um, a 
chemical you can get on Amazon. It's called White Bright, and it's literally made for uh, taking yellow out of plastic, white plastic. So definitely give that a try. Shout out to the crazy robot lady. Uh, she's the one that turned me on to that, and uh, it worked like a charm. It did take a long time. It took me several weeks to get those eyes white. Um, but it does work. Uh, you have to put it out in direct sunlight or uh, use a black light. So I've done both. I put her out in the sun during the day and I wrapped everything up so you could just have the eyes in the sun. And that night I put her under a black light. So she uh, is good to go. So um, first thing you should do is wash her hair if you're going to wash it. Um, these aren't supposed to be sub submerged in water obviously so you definitely run a risk of water getting in. Um, and I usually do have a little water that gets in the back, so I would just tread lightly if you're going to do that. I usually put saran wrap over the face and tape it with scotch tape so no water gets in there, but some still gets in the back. So um, I usually never, never tilt her up like this until I'm completely done. Um, but you want to wash the hair first because you have to actually go into the back of her head and break the seal of her scalp. And once you do that, then obviously water can easily get in. So. Let's turn her around, and you can see what's inside of it, Jill. Uh, complication is what that is, folks. It usually takes me, I've got a little under three hours now to fix one of the head motors um, and get everything working again. So it's very complicated, mainly because it's so small and it's hard to get to. Um, I made a mistake the first time I tried this to take this ring off here and peeled the head back and I ended up breaking um, some of the eye parts and that Jill now has just become spare parts. So I recommend trying to fix it as it is, as you see here. But before you see this part, what you get is the scalp. So this is usually part here. So you just separate the hair out and then you can, you have to kind of this is glued in there, so you have to peel it off. It's like on a, an edge. Um, and that's gonna be, there it pops off. You'll see, let's see if I can spin it around. It's kind of hard to see doing this with one hand. Um, but underneath you can see there's these two holes and there are screws that are on the inside. There's another piece I'm about to show you. I don't know why that's there. Uh, that has nothing to do with the screws on the inside. And just because you remove those screws uh, doesn't mean this comes off so you literally have to peel this off before you can start so that's just another way for water to get in just be ready all right so there's her scalp and once you remove the scalp this is what's next this is I guess you could say her skull who knew we were gonna get all Frankenstein today so this is like here connected on and the screws I was talking about there underneath yeah, um, you just remove those and then pull up and this pops off. Um, usually, like I said, remember there's a little bit of water from when I wash her hair. It's usually uh, in here and that lets me know that water has gotten in a little bit. Um, so I'm usually very careful to wipe that out. And we're not done. So once you pull the scalp off, I mean the scalp off and the skull, then you have this little guy here that is uh, covering up the motor. So again, super easy. There's just two screws. You pull those off and this pops off the top and then that reveals the inside. Very easy. So um, just keep up with all the screws because there's a million little screws that you can easily mix up. All right. Oh. So um, obviously this is, this is in there. So it's hard to show you all the different parts, but I do have another one. Remember the one I broke? I'm gonna show you that. Uh, part but real quick what I want to show you this happens a lot let's see if you see right down in here there's a screw and a plastic piece that's actually uh, connected to the neck and it kind of keeps all of this in place here there's other screws but that's kind of like supposed to be the support screw a lot of times you'll see this is broke it's hard to see back there you see that little piece of triangle that that's broken off um, that happens a lot on these jewels uh, that means that uh, over time someone probably dropped her or she just had rough play but there's a lot of tension on the screw so that breaks a lot good news is it's not super important uh, I have fixed jewels without that piece uh, being connected and it doesn't do anything to it because like I said there's other screws holding this in 
um, but don't be alarmed if you see that it does have a lot. You can uh, obviously uh, glue that part back on and um, I just don't know if it'll stay because there's a lot of pressure on that piece. Just so before I get to the other one just so you can kind of see this hair out of the way what some of this is back here. So if you looked at my Cricut video, um, you've seen one of these. That is actually one of the wheels, um, but it doesn't control the eyes. It actually controls, uh, sorry, it does control the eyes. Uh, the mouth is on the other side. So just like with uh, Cricut and Corky, you see there's a little piece here that touches onto this wheel and this wheel spins and then this moves out. So when you're doing that, her eyes are going left and right. Um, unlike Creek and Corky, her eyes do not go up and down, um, but she blinks. That's a whole other feature. So anyway, in the front there, and I'll show you another piece in a minute, but as that wheel goes slowly, her eyes go left and right, and it's on a spring. So that's easy to, to come out. Um, to make her eyes blink, it's very complicated, and it's actually way up in there on the front of this thing. Um, so it is very hard to work, but it's really cool if you can get the eyes to blink. And then of course this is the motor um, that runs the belt. There is one belt inside this this whole thing that runs all of it. So um, of course <laughs> it can't be easy, so you have to take the whole thing out to get to that belt. Very complicated. Um, all right, let's see, let me move her out of the way. Hey, Joe. Sorry, my allergies are acting up today. My cat has got the best of me. All right, so this is kind of some of the parts that you would see on the inside. Again, this one's broke, so there's wires messed up. There's, it's really just for spare parts, but I figured it'd be a good, good example to show. So what you're seeing now is the backside of what's in there. So this, remember a minute ago, we were looking at this. And now when you remove this out, that's where all this crazy stuff is happening Oops, <laughs> on the back. And then inside here, that is the front of her face. And you can see her eye sockets and more gears, more motors. Yay, that goes down into the neck and into the body. So on the back side here, this is what controls the uh, mouth. So just like on Cricket and Corky, it's a little like a record and there's a little piece that goes into that groove and it just goes round and around and that's what controls the mouth. And then this weird piece here, this is the eye, uh, the blinking eyelashes, eyelids. So it's on this circular thing, you see it moves, it goes up and down and that's what controls it. Um, I still haven't quite been able to see this in action because it's always obviously facing the back part of it. Um, and you have to get it just right. So to get to the belt, it's very complicated. Once you take all this out, there let me turn this around. There are three screws uh, in there. One, two, three. I don't know if you can see the holes. Let me get my little handy dandy stick here. They're down in there. So you have to take those out. Once you take those out, you can crack this bad boy open. Oh, just kidding. You can't crack it open. That's just to remove the front shell. I forget, sorry, it's been a minute. You take this out, you have to remove those two as well. Once you remove those two, then this thing separates in half and that is where the belt is inside there. Um, if I start working on this one jill, at some point I will edit in or add some video of what the belt actually looks like, but I'm not gonna take that apart right now. But I will show you the eyes. Um, remember I have the broken jewel. So creepy, right? This is, oh, let me turn this around. This is what the eyes look like. So uh, they're inside obviously, so you don't need that part. And then on the back side, so we were looking at that skull. This little brown part, that is what controls the left and right movement. So there's a stick that goes into that, to that spring. And then this little knob here, that is what controls the eyelids going up and down. So they connect to a little wire here that goes to the eyelid. 
Uh, that is the part I broke because there is very, very tiny little piece of old 35 year old plastic that holds that eyelid uh, little like hook to this. And when I was pulling this part out, it broke. So, and I have yet to be able to find a way to fix it. So this is the, the broken eyelid. Sorry, out of focus there. Um, yeah, there's a little hook that goes right here and that is what broke off. But it goes in, goes up and down like that normally. And that is kind of the inside of what you're looking at. Um, it's, again, takes me a couple hours. It's very complicated. These wires are super fragile, very easy to come loose. And then you also have all of this going on underneath here. Uh, the, this goes into the body and this is this connects to a microchip reader that makes the head go left and right and I'll actually show you that part so there it is so when you first open a Jill you look up at her head there's that metal bar that goes down through here that connects these two pieces connect to the arms those wires but right here is the track so you see that gold shiny gold part there it's like a little rake. So, oh, sorry, we're mad. That little guy there, he actually rakes across this and that's what reads to tell the head to go left and right. So, um, very complicated piece. Obviously, you don't wanna get this wet because it's a microchip board. Um, but that's connected down in there. So you have to do a lot to get this head off from the body. All right, before we actually look in one of the bodies, oh, I do have, another whole another mechanism because again Jill's super complicated this is her arm mechanisms so this sits right below the head in the torso and there is a motor and a belt on each arm left and right it is very hard to get to again just like everything with Jill very difficult um, what you're seeing on the sides those are uh, where the arms are and I just removed the arm so that's the part that goes inside the arm the plastic arm it's just hollow that goes up and down um, but this again very complicated. Um, I can't even get this one to work, right? But as you see, there's more of those little tracks uh, on the side there. And to get inside this, you have to remove that microchip track. You have to go down there, get the screws out. You have to pull both of these things apart. These wires stay connected, so it's very easy for them to come undone. And then to get to the band, the belt, you have to open this up to get in here and there's a band on each side and again it's just uh, it's it's this is probably the most complicated part of the entire jill in my opinion um it's very tedious it's very hard to get in there and if you just do any little thing wrong uh it messes up the arms so there's that all right and then we can look a little bit inside uh jill um i was going to show you the cassette player but i realized uh that it is broken apart here so I'll just kind of have to show you pieces of that but we can at least see what's going on there's a lot of screws you have to take to open this up Ta-da! there it is that's all the craziness uh, it actually looks worse uh, than it is because all this is is a little microchip board you can see there's one there it's real thin uh, and then behind that's the battery case so it looks like there's a lot of stuff but there's not there's just this little board uh, and then this is, I guess you could say the heart of Jill. This is the cassette player. This controls everything. So if this doesn't work right, nothing works right. Uh, there's a lot of belts in here. There's a lot of parts. And this is usually the problem. Uh, if your Jill doesn't work, it's this. So we'll talk about that in a second. Uh, this little cavity up here. Remember I said the head and all of that good stuff. Yeah. So this would go... See those grooves? This goes down. Oh, I got it switched around. Do I? Yeah. Oh. Stuff's heavy too and super old and fragile. So this would go down inside there. Uh, there's the groove. So it slide down and then the head, there's a stick that goes down in between there and in behind the board there. Uh, and you have to get it all in there just right or it doesn't work right or head doesn't work. Um, it gets very complicated. Um, so this stick goes down into the body and there's a little piece here that connects that holds it in place. All right, um, here's our speaker and this is the little uh, 
part that you talk into so she can uh, hear your voice. So it's like a little microphone. Um, this comes out all the time, but it's easy just to tape it back in. And it connects back behind the cassette player. If you ever want to work on the cassette player, uh, it's pretty easy. Well, nothing's easy, but it's easier than some stuff. Um, you have to take the legs off, which are just a big piece of plastic, which are very easy. There's usually a screw here, here, and then you see back behind here all these screws. All those have to come out. So you take all those out, and then the legs just kind of snap off, and then you just have a torso with the cassette player. Um, I usually just have the legs off when I'm working because they're just in the way. Uh, that way I just have a torso. So once you take all of those screws out, not only do the legs come out, but this whole piece, this whole cassette player is connected to this. Like it's just one chunk. So you can pull out the whole cassette player. And that's what I was gonna show you, but I have one, one that's completely dismantled. Um, so you can see all the different parts there. So yeah, not arms anymore. That's not a bag. Um, the reason I took this one apart is because there was a scratchy noise. Uh, this was actually the original cassette player that was in my African American, uh, Jill, and it was scratchy and I could not figure it out. Um, it wasn't the volume wheel, that little green thing you see there. Yeah, it actually ends up, it was the, uh, wires that go to the head reader. And I'm about to show you that because that, we talked about the heart of Jill. This is the part that controls everything. So. Uh, see if we can see in there a little bit. So you see there's a belt there on the top. There's two belts there. I never have to change these. I never have. Um, just like with Cricut and Corky, it's rare that you have to change the cassette belts. I have tried to change this one just because it's so easy to get to, but I have found if you don't have, if you don't have the exact right belt, she won't sound right. So you know how Jill has a very like high pitched, you know, teen voice. If you put the wrong belt on there and it's too tight, she kind of slows down and sounds more adult, I guess you could say. Um, and if it's too tight, then she sounds really slow. So try to leave the belts alone if you can. Um, but this is where the tape goes. It inserts in the back and comes down this little shaft here. And this right here is the reader. This is how it reads the cassette. This is the, ugh, this is the problem with most Jills. If she doesn't talk or do anything, it's usually something to do with this. Uh, if she sounds gurgled, if, you know, there's some kind of, she's too low, if there's static, it's this, it's this thing. <laughs> it's, it's super complicated. Uh, I could, yeah, there we go. So again, it reads on the front of that. Um, I don't recommend messing with it unless it's really a last option, but to adjust this, it goes uh, left and right and forward and back. That's what these two tiny little screws do. It's like on a, see, it's like lifted up on a spring. Um, if you mess with those, then it'll move this, but I warn you, if you even just barely turn it, it's gonna completely uh, change what's going on and it could even eat the tape. So just be very careful if you're messing with that. Um, but that is kind of how it works. Uh, this little, so when you put the tape in, let's see, I get a little stick here. This little black part snaps forward and that's, this is what starts pushing the tape across the reader. And then when it stops to rewind, this thing pushes back and starts to rewind. So there's a little wheel on the cassette and that's really what controls everything. Uh, again, this back here, once you take it out, you can remove this. Uh, it's just in the way usually when I'm working on stuff. Um, and then if you want to take the whole reader out, I mean the whole cassette player, you have to disconnect this piece and this one. And again, this is the part right here. This is what was causing that static. Remember I was saying I had a problem. I kept messing with different things. It was this, these wires or some kind of maybe disconnect or they fall apart very easy. Um, something in this wire is what's making that one static and I have not figured it out yet. Uh, this one, if you notice, uh, <laughs> it's missing a lot of stuff. This cassette player has a flaw, but I use it because uh, I keep it this way because it rewinds tapes. Um, that's another huge issue Jill has is that at the end of the tape, she's supposed to rewind and most of them don't. I have not figured out what the cause of that is. It's something to do with this part. 
Um, but this deal, for some reason, in some weird broken way, it rewinds all tapes uh, all the time. So, because um, normally when you put in jewel tape, even if it rewinds a little bit, it stops at different sections. This one, if you pull it out and put it back in, it'll just keep rewinding. So I use this player, this whole body here, really just to rewind my tapes. It's crazy, right? So, um, I think that's pretty much everything. Just have all sorts of various parts over here. Um, I did, did bring out some of my belts. I have lots of different belts uh, inside there. <laughs> you can see, just like with Cricket and Corky, um, the old belts, these are original. It's hard to see there, but see they have an egg shape. It's because they rotted and uh, they were stuck in place for so long that they didn't work. So um, I tried something called Rubber Renew on these. It did not work. Um, it does work on the uh, the wheels, the capstan wheels and all that stuff on the inside, but it does not work on these bands. So, um, so far I've not been able to find exact replacements. So, um, all right, I think that is it. This video has gone on long enough. I hope we didn't really get into how to fully repair, but we at least know now what's going on inside Jill, and there's a lot. So if this seemed overwhelming, uh, I'm not gonna sugarcoat it, it is. It, it took me uh, probably a good six months to a year um, to figure out how to work on Jill, and that's why I've been hesitant on putting up a video because I still honestly mess up all the time. Um, and these are so rare and they're so expensive, um, I wouldn't want you to further damage your Jill. So if you're gonna try anything, proceed with caution, or if you want to, you can reach out, send me a message, and I'll see if I can help you. And that's it for now. Thanks for listening.